a male convicted rapist calling himself Isla Bryson um, is currently in a woman's prison, although there's been a last minute intervention from First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, who says he should leave. This is despite the fact that Sturgeon has been pushing for this gender recognition bill, which would suggest that anyone who claims to be a woman should be treated as one. Ella, what have you made of this extraordinary story? It is extraordinary. And I think the way in which it's been reported has been extraordinary. If you look at the um, the way in which the BBC has reported on it, it says that a trans, you know, uses the she, her pronouns, it says mm. that a trans woman who was convicted of rape, you know, talking about a woman raping another woman, basically. Yeah. And, you know, if you if you were just fresh and new to this debate, you would be absolutely but completely bamboozled by what actually happened until you get sort of six paragraphs down. And they mentioned that actually this individual was called Adam Graham yeah. and is a man um, and decided to begin a transitioning journey after being caught for mm. um, several crimes, sex offending crimes. Um, and I think the reason why that's really important is because Nicola Sturgeon is has been forced to take this U-turn, people are calling it, but I mean, most people understand it as the most basic of simple kind of common sense understandings that you should not put a rapist into a woman's prison. Um, the only reason that she's done it is because it's become untenable to, to for her own career, I think, mm. for her to main, maintain this absolutist approach to, um, tra- to the issue of trans and trans women in particular. Don't forget that um, throughout the kind of process of the of the Scottish Gender um, Recognition Reform Bill, that there were a, there was an amendment put forward to deal with this very issue to say, mm. okay, okay, you know, we can have rows about gender, blah blah blah, but on the basic level of a sex offender entering a prison, shouldn't that not be allowed uh, under this legislation? And it was dismissed as being transphobic. Yeah, and you know, it's only thanks to the thousands of Scottish people and also people across the whole of the UK you know, saying, hang on a minute, this has just gone completely too far. And probably some of Nicola Sturgeon's aides saying, you're going to completely lose all political credibility if you continue down this road, that she's taken this decision. But it's not, this is not sufficient. This does Mm. not, um, you know, do anything to uh, apologise for or kind of recuperate Nicola Sturgeon's political authority in relation to this. The SNP is absolutely mired in this gender um, and transgender nonsense. And this is the very basic bare minimum of an approach to sex difference, which is that you do not put men into women's prisons. Tom, Nicola Sturgeon famously said, people raising cases like this, their concerns were not valid. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is now a real humiliation for her, surely. It is. I mean, not least because as you were saying, Ella, you know, this is precisely the case that that amendment would have mitigated against, but mm. for the reasons of ideology and not wanting to be to give an inch, essentially, to any yeah. of the gender critical concerns, they completely knock that back. The thing is, this has happened before. Yeah. Under, I mean, this case was obviously under the existing gender recognition, UK, well, GBY gender recognition laws, um, because the fact that that bill is obviously being held up, it hasn't properly been given royal assent yet. Um, but there have been many other cases like it. There was the Karen White case back in 2018, I think, or thereabouts, um, where this individual, another male rapist, um, career criminal, very sadistic individual, um, decided he was a she mm. and so ended up in a women's prison where he went on to sexually assault two female inmates. Um, there's been various cases of paedophiles who have been, there was one Martin Ponting, who was, he'd been in prison since the late 90s, I think. And around 2017, he decided that he was a woman mm. all of a sudden and then was put into a women's prison. He had to be... Uh, segregated from the rest of the population swiftly after because he would start making advances at the female inmates. And it's these cases, given how across the detail of this whole debate Nicholas Sturgeon poses as, will have been brought to her attention. Yeah. There's also been cases in Scotland of, there was one particular young offender who was caught preying on girls in the supermarket, was sent to a young offender's institution and then was released into a women's halfway house, uh, a sort of hostel. Um, these cases have been brought up time and time again. She's aware of this. It's mm. not a myth. It's not a fantasy. It's not a bigoted fever dream on the part of turfs or whatever. And yet she went ahead with it anyway. The fact that she's been forced under the weight of humiliation to kind of backtrack and to intervene in this particular case, I think just doesn't give her any credit whatsoever. Because this is something that's been dismissed time and time again for the matters of ideology. Even when you're talking about all of these cases, you know, quite a, you know, I think you need 
sex segregated prisons. I think that's just important. It doesn't matter how someone identifies, doesn't yeah. matter how sincere those, doesn't matter if, uh, how sincere those beliefs are, doesn't matter what kind of crimes that they're in for. It's just a fundamental common sense safeguarding thing. It's important for the dignity and safety of the women who are in prison, many of which are very vulnerable individuals in many respects. But at the same time, you'd have to be a complete idiot not to recognise that this is a system that could so easily be exploited. If you yeah. genuinely think that this bloke, Isla Bryson, as he claims, has been gender dysphoric since the age of four mm. and only decided to do anything about it after he had been found to have raped two women and the court proceedings has begun. He was under his original name, but what he now calls his dead name when these court proceedings began. Yeah. Then you're completely lost. Mm. Like, this is complete nonsense. And not only is there this credulity in the face of obvious fakers, there's a just sort of willingness to almost be like, well, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Like, yeah. well, you know, you just ignore stuff like this yeah. because it's just the old anecdote, even though it has happened time and time and time again. I mean, I mean, this is surely people are just trying to defend the indefensible. That's why it's got to this level because people are trying to stick by the idea that no one would ever tell a lie about their gender identity. And so they even have to accept cases like this. I think it's it shows the complete lack of nuance, which, you know, let's, let's be really clear here. From the get-go of this sort of gender war, there has been on the one side trans activists who, you know, either whether it's Stonewall types, mermaid types, or the SNP, who have taken an absolutist position, which is trans women are women you know, you must believe. And mm. you know, if you don't, then you're a bigot. On the other side of, of gender critical people, or, you know, some of them dispute that term, but whatever, the side that's critical of all this stuff that we're <laughs> on, the vast majority of people say, you know, we are, there. there's nuance here. We are, we'll be nice to people. You can dress how you want. You can blah, 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 all that sort of stuff that you have to apologize for before you say what you want to say. But there is a kind of, you know, much more lenient, mm. much more open to a kind of the sense that there are many areas in society where people can mix and, you know, you never have to ask someone's pronouns and all the rest of it. Just not in the very specific places of sex segre where sex segregation, as Tom says, is important, like changing rooms in schools or prisons or rape crisis centres, you know, and, and can that just be our red line, please? And that's, you know, that is portrayed as some kind of horrendously bigoted position. But I just wanted to say one point on the, on, you know, in relation to how the law works and what, you know, we have so much discussion, particularly about violence against women, about how important it is to record things that happen, to record how many men rape women, to, you know, to record domestic violence statistics and all that kind of stuff. And so then for a legal system to effectively tell lies, mm, which is yeah. to say that on the 15th of January, a trans woman raped a woman, mm. you know, which is a lie. What yeah. happened was a man raped a woman, a man called Adam Graham, um, to then say, you know, to take him at his word of saying, well, this was my dead name and to change, you know, whether it's a birth certificate or a crime that happened, a fact that happened in society, someone was born, someone committed a crime and then say that that didn't happen, that something else happened. It, you know, where do you stand if that's, if that's what the kind of the very basics of sort of fact in our society are going to be thrown out of the window. Mm. It's you, it's not an extreme thing to say that you then can't, nothing can be proven anymore. If you give, um, if you kind of give any leeway to the idea that those facts cannot stand unaltered. It's a really important thing, not just for sort of stats around violence against women, but for trust in the justice system. Well, if, you know, if, if and, it, and has, as has happened before, victims are made yeah. to refer to their attacker as she, yeah. when mm. they obviously know that that is not a she. Yeah, and in the context of recent years in which particularly when you're talking about sexual violence trials and so mm. on, a lot of eff effort and thinking being put into how do we make this an as comfortable environment as possible for if that can even be the case for the um, complainants in those particular cases, you're now kind of, it's in this particular category, often involving some of the most depraved and in many cases devious sort of individuals that we're talking about. You're complaining, you know, even if they're not compelled to address them in that way, they have to hear other people do so. They have to read news reports in which her penis yeah. is referred to. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is deranging. It's also deeply insulting, as you know, as you both suggest. And as you say, it's the, it's the um, legal system, it's the media... And the other thing you think is that in relation to trans people themselves, I mean, what this, the, essentially the kind of conflation of trans people and their 
right to identify however they wish to live lives free of discrimination and so on has been kind of which everyone can get on board with broadly speaking which has been been conflated with essentially a civil rights movement devoted to the rights of sex offenders feelings not to be hurt and to be allowed in a prison that won't upset their often quite flimsy claimed identities for themselves mm. I don't, I'm sure they, this is something that they are not welcoming. You know, yeah. the thing that is being associated with putting children of younger and younger ages on, you know, life altering courses of therapy and so on. This is surely something that is not good for, for trans people for this debate. And it's just, you know, if anything, it's the sort of trans activists who've done more than anyone else to conflate trans people and these predators they've yeah. done, they're the ones who have collapsed the boundaries between these two things because they have this practice credulity in the face of these claims even when it's so obviously depraved and dishonest individuals involved in it 